I believe it's the overreaction of the left. When you see people like Ted Cruz getting chased out of restaurants by a mob. Oh, when you see, you're when not you, going to use the mob I will, word Oh, here. It's, it's totally a mob. It is without a there's doubt. Mad, it's, it's, there's no other word mad. for it. What's going on here? And, and clutching our pearls and saying, we can't call that a, you know, a mob. Those are protests. No, that is mob behavior. How many times yeah. that Look, happen, Matt? Everybody stop, That's everybody stop. Been... Matt, we already did that. We yeah. already said they weren't mobs. Two CNN hosts having very similar freakouts over the same word. Yeah, something's going on here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Oh, hi, I'm the heretic, and CNN wants to ban the word mob. This whole incident started after conservative commentator Matt Lewis, who writes for the Daily Beast, with Mary Catherine Ham, conservative blogger, appeared on CNN Newsroom, anchored by Brooke Baldwin. In a nutshell, two conservatives and a CNN anchor. If you don't know CNN's political slant, then I can't help you. The topic was whether or not the Republican Party would struggle with women voters come the midterms. And when Matt Lewis segued, over to how Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz was confronted several days prior by an angry mob shouting some very impressive slogans at him while out to dinner with his family, it will make the Democrat Party look bad, specifically this incident. We believe survivors! We believe survivors! We believe survivors! Beto is way hotter than you do! We believe survivors! We believe survivors! We believe survivors! God bless you! Let my wife through. We believe survivors! Whatever your opinion of the Democrat Party, the optics of hunting down and harassing a man trying to have a nice dinner out with his family looks really freaking bad. Let alone the ethics and morality of hunting down and harassing a man who's trying to have a nice dinner out with his family even if that man is a priest of statism. All this in response to his then-presumed yes vote on the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh for the Supreme Court, who, at the time, was being accused of sexual assault by several women 36 years ago. Now, I won't go into detail on those incidents, but it's some helpful context. It's also the same context for things like this. So let's not beat around the bush. This is a mob. A disorderly crowd of people using intimidation tactics to coerce priests of statism into complying with their agenda. Oh, you see that purple dot? You think that purple dot is really annoying, don't you? You just hate that purple dot and wish nothing more than for there to be no more purple dot on your screen, right? Well, do everything I say and that purple dot will go away. I promise. Naturally, our dear, brave, and objective CNN anchor took the information and addressed his concerns, right? Right. What about the people who were at the Supreme Court banging on the walls? What do you call that? Civil protest? Or is that a mob? I think it's easily a mob. Yeah, and if it were Tea Partiers, we'd call it a mob for sure. Come on, let's be serious. The issue Brooke Baldwin has is that he called them a mob. Her problem This highly respected anchor of a major media TV show viewed by millions of Americans in homes all across the country, excuse me, dozens of Americans in airports they pay to have their channels tuned to, has nothing to do with unruliness. Nothing about the priest of statism that was harassed because of slogans. Nothing about a mischaracterization not Matt Lewis's part about their behavior. Nope, he just used the wrong adjective. Miss Baldwin thinks she can fool you, distract you from what Mr. Lewis is actually saying by creating some feigned outrage over him using the wrong word, the red herring fallacy. But you already knew that, didn't you? Here's what's really happening. Prominent members of the traditionally big government Democrat Party have been agitating their base. You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy 
what you stand for, what you care about. <laughs> but Michelle says that, you know, when they go low, we go high. No, no. When they go low, we kick them. People they disagree with in their democratic system are horrible people who deserve only violence. Once so agitated, why is anyone surprised when they look to violence to achieve their political ends? You know, like a terrorist group? But since we can't call them proto-terrorists, they're identified as a mob. Problem is that their being identified exactly as they are makes them look bad, so rather than try to improve their behavior, they turn it around and say that somehow we're in the wrong for using the proper definition of words. As though it's inappropriate to say it. It's the M word, you see. Yeah, and if it were Tea Partiers, we'd call it a mob for sure. Come on, let's be serious. Let me, let me let me let me move past the M word because I do feel like that is part of the, the weaponization of, of what's happening now. Liberals, Democrats, and Marxists in general have had an unprecedented ability to control the language for a long time, redefining words like justice, racism, tolerance, sex, progress, family, marriage, liberal, anarchy, fascism, and by extension Nazism, and let's not forget, they've redefined the word life. In 1984, George Orwell predicted that totalitarians would alter the language itself to make it impossible to criticize them. He called it Newspeak. The progressives are in a relentless march to ban words that could be used to criticize them. That's what this whole mob thing is about. Anybody remember when they attempted to ban the word bossy? We need to help them lean in. Words matter. Let's just ban the word bossy. And encourage girls to lead. To be strong and be ambitious. Listen to your own voice. There are no limits. Dare to be you. You can change the world. Let's ban bossy. Be brave. Be you. Ban bossy. It makes sense why they would do this. Altering your behavior to be more respectable while you're campaigning to spend other people's stolen money on your pet projects is hard work. Banning people from correctly identifying your awful behavior so that it's impossible for them to hold you to account for it. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. The only reason this is happening is because the opposing faction of the priesthood of statism is actually doing something intelligent and is campaigning on the Democrats' lack of restraint. Get up and please get up in the face of some Congress people. Is this the quote unquote mob? Just in time for the midterm elections in the United States, too, this November 2018. Gee, it's almost as if the premise of liberal democracy, that is the peaceful transition of violent coercive power from one political party to the next, is a farce, as the power itself isn't peaceful to begin with, but that would be silly. This probably won't matter in a few weeks. You'll definitely not hear a word about this after the midterms, but if you think this will be the last time, censorship of individual words is going to be brought up, you're sorely mistaken. On October 11, 2018, Anti-Media, The Free Thought Project, Police the Police, and Minds.com's Facebook pages were banned, as were the editors of those respective websites on Twitter. It's also been reported that Twitter has banned Twitter users who use the NPC meme in their profiles because it's dehumanizing social justice warriors. Eh. As if being called Russian bots wasn't already dehumanizing, or that simply banning words like mob or NPC is going to distract us from the fact that all social justice warriors and progressives sound so much alike, you could be forgiven for thinking they're pre-programmed to speak those lines over and over again. Greetings, Evoker. How goes it? Fantastic. Thanks for asking. Great. So long. Be seeing you. This is the world we're entering. Completely common and utterly innocuous words potentially getting you kicked off of your favorite social media platforms. Or, if we go the way of China with its social credit system, prevent you from holding a job because you said the word mob. I mean, hell, 
we already have the surveillance technology to pull it off. Kind of funny how all this is coming up right before the midterm elections, where the government will deign to allow ordinary people to pick which single one of the 435 members of the House of Representatives or one of the 100 senators gets to decide how to spend other people's money to give the rabble the illusion that they have any say whatsoever on what the priesthood of statism says or does. But you know what's not up for a vote? Which words or which memes will get you kicked off the internet this week? I'm sorry, but you weren't invited to those conference calls. This is why it's more important than ever that we support content creators on our own. As Esoteric Entity pointed out, YouTube is strangling my and others' YouTube channels. We need your help. Please, share our videos on your online communities. Show your friends. Meanwhile, me and Esoteric Entity have released the first version of FreedomNet, an all-new internet infrastructure more secure than the HTT protocol used today, and is deliberately designed to be completely anonymous and impervious to government censorship. Hell, we couldn't censor you on FreedomNet or FNet even if we wanted to. Come check us out. Links in the description. Questions? Comments? Critique? Does CNN not wanting you to use the M word make you want to say the word mob even more? What's the next word to be banned? And what do you expect will happen during the 2020 presidential election? Leave a comment below. Support me through Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.